Basically, that that chemical horse out of the road, the quality of the soil, the structure of the soil, and it overproduces the bacteria, and the bacteria needed bodily nourishment, so they started sort of tearing into the carbon, the organic carbon, the humus. So the humus actually um, gradually got less and less and less. It's like shingle, really. So it's got no no life in it at all. You see how it goes to dust and you get dust storms. <laughs> It smells chemical. And that effect has happened all over India. The chemical has destroyed this 30, 40 years of wonderful, what was, took 5,000 years to build up. I mean, it's an absolute, absolute tragedy. But what isn't the tragedy is there is an answer. The Sardar Patel farm covers 150 acres on the outskirts of the city of Ahmedabad in Gujarat. The farm grows around 30 different varieties of fruit, herbs, spices, and vegetables. Well, if you're comparing biodynamic agriculture with conventional agriculture, with the biodynamic agriculture, you can guarantee that you will have a soil in the future. Conventional farming, you do probably get a higher crop yield, but it's cost you a heck of a lot more to actually grow that. And also, the end result is that eventually your soil will be so destroyed with the chemicals, you won't be able to have a farm, you won't be able to grow anything. Wow, that's good. To compare the sustainability of biodynamic with conventional agriculture, you need to examine such things as soil quality, crop performance, financial profitability, and environmental qualities. Farmers find soil quality is better on biodynamic farms. By adding compost, soil structure is improved. There's less compaction, more topsoil, and greater biological activity. It's got a nice texture, and it's also got a very good humus forming. And the humus content, you can tell by actually spreading it out like that, you see? And it's very smooth between your fingers, and you can actually smooth it like that. And it's got no smell of cow dung at all. It's all ready to go and it's, it's just full of the right sort of bacteria, fungi. With conventional farming, chemicals are used to nourish the soil, eventually destroying the biological activity that is the core of plant life and human health. Now the crop performance, of course, it's very spectacular with, with chemicals. I mean, you look at the crop, you see it's all green or it's all flowering, or it's, you know. But what you don't realize is that behind that, you've got a weak plant. In the biodynamic system, the soil is a balance of micronutrients and bacteria. Contrary to the mythology of chemical farming that says biodynamic agriculture results in lower yields, in reality, crop performance is greater. Plants are more disease resistant and root development is markedly stronger. These factors contribute to consistently high yields and superior quality. This is one thing that we found with biodynamic agriculture, where you have balanced soil, you don't have insect attack. I mean, it's just amazing because the soil is balanced, these plants are balanced, the insects aren't interested. Just imagine not having to put on any insecticide and there's money in the bank for the farmer. So it's traveling in the city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of people follow you, oh, this is Sada for the farm. Organic, give me some of it, or come to my place, pass by my place. Looking at profitability, usually the returns are the same or even higher with biodynamics. Part of the reason is biodynamic food commands a premium. That premium can range anywhere from 10 to 100% more. When environmental impacts of biodynamic and organic farming systems are compared with conventional, the biodynamic and organic systems always come out on top. There is less erosion, less potential for groundwater contamination, less movement of nitrates down the soil profile, and no possibility of synthetic pesticide residues in crops. The sustainability comes through organic farming. You don't have to buy anything. You can make it all yourself. I often say the wealth of India is the amount of biomass that the farmer can grow. Biomass meaning 
material that you can make compost from. And that includes cow dung, very many green trees with, with you know, luxuriant green leaf, which can be chopped up. That's your green, that's a protein aspect. And then you've got all the paddy straw. So you've got three basic ingredients, and it's all there. And the farmer can provide it all himself without having to buy anything. Hello. <laughs> Look at this. Beautiful shot. Wow. <laughs> the reality is that there's no real comparison between conventional and biodynamic farming. Because the biodynamic farmer actually nourishes his soil. He is the steward of his soil because he knows it's, it's going to be needed for the next 100, 200, 300 years. And in doing biodynamics, that will happen. The chemical farmer is all gone within 10 years. You've got no soil, but the biodynamic farmer will have his soil forever. And that's what we've got to look at. We've got to save the world. We can't, can't blow it away with chemicals. The International Water Management Institute in Gujarat says India's green revolution is living on borrowed water and borrowed time. This particular one farm, South India, where they've got a salt problem. You know, there's just no biomass there at all. There's no humus in the soil. There's no absorption of the rain. The rain just runs straight off. There's no water in the, in the underground. And they're still having to irrigate because they've got so much chemical. They've been putting so much chemical on the land since the Green Revolution to neutralise that and to grow the crops. They've over-irrigated. They've taken all the sweet water and all they've left was salty water. And so they're irrigating with salt water. We are actually in a pretty bad situation and we've got to have water to go on living. We can't drink salty water because it makes you more thirsty. As the failure and true cost of chemical agriculture escalates, thousands of small farmers are turning to biodynamics. Well, the water problem is actually finding um, water, the, the wastewater, which is mainly water from the washing, washing the dishes, is just running away. And that could, it's fairly pure because they don't use soap, they use wood ashes for cleaning the dishes. And so you've got a wood ash combination there, which is fine. And that can be saved and used regularly on the compost. That would be enough to keep, the, keep all this compost we saw moist. I have seen that uh, the farmer growing with biodynamics, the water holding capacity has increased of the soil. Not only that, during heavy floods and heavy rainfall, very good vertical penetration is there. The other good thing is that people are, are, are reporting that they're using up to 50% less water in biodynamic agriculture. So if you imagine a country like India where they use a lot of water in agriculture, using half of that, that's a huge saving. Organic farming sustains in drought, but only I can say that organic farming and uh, uh, biodynamic farmers can sustain when there are no rains, no water irrigation facilities. In the public perception of the West, India is an undeveloped country. Small family farms dominate the rural sector. Sustainable agriculture, farming that is not controlled by corporate agendas, is the key to a harmonious society. And there's nothing undeveloped about that. Even if, uh, they, if this person is doing a BD compost, everybody will come and help him. Then they will complete this work, then they will go to another field. Mm. Then they will go to Sunil's field, then Anil's field. And they will, collectively they are doing. And whatever the difficulties they are facing, they are overcoming these difficulties. Electricity, just they will have this idea. Labor problem, they will do their themselves. And if there is a shortage of cow dung, one farmer will give to another farmer. Like this, they are helping and solving their problems. That is a great change which we are bringing in rural prosperity. Now, we are giving them another messages besides agriculture. That is health, that is about education, family planning. We are bringing all these things to bring an integrated, holistic, rural prosperity.